Previously on MasterChef Back to Win, welcome to the top 10. Woo! You have to elevate gas station snacks into gourmet dishes. Wow. That's the secret of any great chef. Elevation, right? It's about to go down. Get it! I melt the gummy bears down. I pour the beer in there. What? That sounds disgusting. I want that immunity pin back. And while some created snack magic, it's delicious. It's one of the best dishes that you've cooked. Immunity goes to Christian and Shanika. One cook was left behind. It's difficult to eat. The fondant is gross. Unfortunately, it does not taste good, young lady. Say goodbye. Tonight, top nine. Oh. Another winner's mixed you box reveals a familiar face. Oh. And he's spicing things up. Oh. Emily, your favorite. This is my worst nightmare. <laughs> but if they can't stand the heat. When we have too much spice, we don't want yeah. that. I'm not going to make that mistake. Go and don't use that caviar. Where did the last minute go? They'll have to say goodbye to the MasterChef kitchen. It's a little bit bizarre. It's hard, like a hockey puck. You missed the mark. You're a much better cook than that dish was. I hate this part. All right. Top nine. It's a big one. Yep. But an even bigger surprise inside that box. Hello. Things are going to get hot tonight. Things yep. are going to get very hot. Welcome back, guys. Oh, mystery box. Oh, that's right. a mystery box. Oh. This mystery box is so huge. I'm pretty sure that's a person inside. Oh, here it is. Here we go. Yeah. Who's under the mystery box? Get this time? I know, right? Again. We are on top nine right now. I've been on the top three, three times, and I am just so close to holding that trophy. I can't even taste it. Right, so uh, welcome back to the top nine. Woo. Shanika and Christian, enjoy that immunity whilst it lasts, because that last challenge was the final time we're giving out the immunity <laughs> pin <laughs> of this season. I knew it. Yeah, I knew on. it had to end. You're lucky. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one out of the top nine who has not gotten the immunity pin, but hey, I'm not here to win that immunity pin. I'm back to win. So, after tonight, all of you must cook in every single challenge. Wow. But whoever cooks the best dish tonight does still get a huge advantage in the next challenge. Ooh. And trust me, you want that one. But, of course, if you're the worst cook of the night, you will be eliminated. Now, we've got another exciting winner's mystery box for all of you tonight. Are you ready to see who's under here and what they bought for you? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're gonna love this one. Let's see who's inside. Chef. What an entrance, man. <laughs> How was we'll that, Vicky? Hi, Joe. Oh, my God. It's Jerron. Jerron is the winner of my season, season nine. Jerron! He's known for big, bold flavors, big plates, you know what I mean? And heavy on the spice. Jerron, welcome back, young man. Thank and you. What an absolute pleasure. And one of our most recent winners. How much has your life changed since then? Oh my gosh, Gordon, this changed tremendously. I'm working on a family-inspired cookbook, traveling the world, doing cooking classes. I've opened up a restaurant. I'm working on my own brand of Nashville hot sauce. I mean, life-changing completely. Amazing. How does it feel to see some of the competitors you recognize? Oh, it feels amazing. I mean, Bowen, Emily, Shanika. I mean, strong, strong cooks in the kitchen. I'm excited to see, you know, how they've developed as chefs over this period of time. Bowen, would you like John to come and work with Shanika in your restaurant? Of course. <laughs> it feels available, but I cannot pay you a lot. <laughs> Right, everyone, please head to your station so we can see what's under your Jaron inspired mystery boxes. Right, on the count of three, lift those boxes. One, two, three. Lift! Oh, 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 oh what the? 
<laughs> There's all this weight of just chilies from all around the world. Jalapenos, serranos, poblanos, Thai chili peppers. I mean, the list goes on. I love spicy food. I'm always cooking with chilies and peppers, so I'm excited. Let's go. Woo! Emily, your favorite. Yeah, my favorite. <laughs> I hate spicy food. So this is my nightmare challenge. So this is not even like my not my favorite. Like, oh, you know, I don't love it, but like, I'll do it. No, I cannot with spicy food. I put every kind of pepper under the sun inside those mystery boxes. So don't be afraid to get nice with that spice. <laughs> Tonight, you'll have to prove that you can keep up with his spicy palates and cook dishes with heat. You will have only 45 minutes to cook a hot and spicy dish using the peppers under Jerome's mystery box. Right, you guys ready? Yes, yes. Chef. Yes. Your time starts now. Go. Oh boy. Come on, Willie. Come on, Willie. Wow, Willie. Are you saying bolt there? <laughs> Roasted red peppers. The lemon. Where is the plantain? We have Japanese eggplant. Being Lebanese, I'm no stranger to spices and flavor and peppers. So I want to take those flavors that I learned from my childhood, from my grandparents, and really bring it to my plate today. But it's super important for me to impress Jerron. I watched his season, and I loved how he stayed true to his roots, and that's what I'm going to do. There you go, Amanda. Good job, young lady. Thank you. I my peas. Come on, baby. Willie, really? you getting set up for success tonight. Get it done. Her. OK, perfect. So I'm going to be doing uh, Indian samosa today using a ton of fresh chilies. And I'm going to be making uh, two different chutneys as well. I absolutely love Indian cuisine. And my father was a huge fan of everything spicy. This dish is inspired by my childhood and my dad's love for spice. You know, he passed away from cancer when I was six years old. So this is a dish that I'm cooking with my heart today. But everybody's off to a strong start. I'm a sweet and spicy boy, so I want to able to put in myself on the plate. I'm making a seafood stuffed pepper and then serve with spicy chili sweet sauce and then also fried plantain cake. In China, we always eat uh, spicy food. I like burning my mouth. That's the spice level I really like. So the peppers for me is not unfamiliar ingredient. Here's my cayenne pepper. Oh, so he's using those peppers. Got it. You know, I like spicy food, but everyone's going savory. Let's stand out. Let's go sweet. Doing dessert in 45 minutes. There is no room for error. But the last time I took a risk, I won the immunity pin. So today, I'm elevating a churro and going to make it nice and spicy with a spicy uh, chocolate dipping sauce. Everyone can throw a chili into something to make it hot but it's about that balance. And I think that's what's really gonna shine in my chocolate sauce, is the balance, the heat, the fat, the sweet, it's all gonna come together. You didn't wanna go savor tonight, Derek? Christian's been slicking by with that immunity, but he don't got that crutch anymore. Ah! Cause there's uh, no more immunity to win tonight. How many immunity wins you got, Derek? I got three, cause I got your two, cause I'm living in your head rent free, goodbye. Mm, he <laughs> told your ass. Ah! Seven minutes gone, 38 minutes remaining, let's go. So a heat-inspired challenge tonight. Top nine, someone is going to win a game-changing advantage. Sadly, somebody will be going home. Jaron, so good to have you back here. But what would you make tonight? What would you do in 45 minutes? Maybe a jambalaya. You know, I would go on those uh, traditional Smart. New Orleans flavors. I would do maybe some uh, bone marrow and maybe create a hot sauce on the mm. side to kind of cut the mm. richness of that bone marrow within my jambalaya. Mm. That's important to remember. We want them to bring the heat, but not obliterate our palate. So that balance is going to be key. When we have too much spice, the actual flavor of the food can be drowned out by the yes. spice. And we don't want yes. that. Yeah. So I would do some sort of cooling element, like a uh, yogurt sauce that will downplay that heat a bit. Exactly. When you start the fire, you got to have the water hose. Absolutely. 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 If you can't stand the heat, get out the kitchen. Oh, God. Where you know she don't like spice. 
Like, she hates spice. So I'm a super taster, um, and basically it means like you just have more taste buds. When I eat something spicy, it overpowers everything else. So like I'm not able to actually taste the food that I'm eating if there's really almost any amount of spice to it. So this is definitely stretching me in terms of conceptualizing a dish and then being able to like put that together. So I'm basing my dish on something very familiar to me. There's nothing I like about this challenge. I have to use chilies. I have to make a dish in 45 minutes. <sighs> you gotta be kidding me. This is about to be serious. Someone's going home. Ten minutes gone, 35 minutes remaining. And this heat inspired challenge tonight. Man, that clock moves fast in 45 minutes. Sure oh, does. sugar. I don't miss that clock. I think you don't. <laughs> come on. Come on, come on. Yeah. Right, uh, Emily, Chef. tell us the dish, what are you doing? We're making a shrimp fra diablo. So it's going to wow. be a nice spicy tomato sauce. You're going to have chili dusted fried shrimp over the top. What chilies are you using? Fresh Fresno chili. I'm trying that right now. We're using Ooh. some espalette pepper. We're using red pepper flakes. We're going to be using a little bit of Calabrian chili oil as well. So keeping it in that kind of European mm. fashion. Okay. Yeah. One thing that I see that you're doing really well is you're charring that chili mm -hmm. over the heat. And I think that Here. starts to activate multiple levels of flavor. Exactly. So I love to see that. You're not a big fan of the heat, are you? I don't love spicy food. <laughs> We're opposites. Well, you're a spicy person. Right. When you put down plates, you put the M at the top and you plate every plate the exact same because these all look out of order now. Tonight's about spice. Mm. You don't want to make your dish overly hot, right? Right. You want to find ways to play into the flavors of the pepper or of the heat. That's the goal. Smart move with the shrimp. It's sweet, so that will help cut through that spice. But they'll get that balance right. Balance, exactly. Remember, somebody's going home. I'm hoping it's not me tonight. There is 30 minutes to go. Good yes, luck. Chef, thank yes, Chef. Thank you. Thank you. Luck. Thanks, Ron. Yeah. Thank you. How are you cornbread looking, man? Good. So hot. Willie, so what are you making? Uh, so today I'm going to be making something that you should be familiar with, Chef. Crawfish and shrimp etouffee. Etouffee. What exactly is an etouffee? It starts with a root. He's going to get the root nice and dark. Beautiful. And then cook it down with our trinity, which is bell peppers, celery, and onions. He has his root rocking and rolling. And what about this basket that spoke to you and said etouffee right away? The spice. The New Orleans, they use spice, and they use it really nicely. Think about infusing those chiles at, at different stages. I, I use this one here for my stock. I don't know what that's yeah, called. Yeah, this is called the chile manzano, okay. which is a great chili uh, from Mexico, which is mild and doesn't have a lot of flavor, but it has... This is a jalapeno, right? No, that's a shushito. Shushito? This yep. is a jalapeno. No, that's a chile serrano. Well, where's okay. the jalapeno? No, here it is. That's a jalapeno. That's a jalapeno. Yeah, see. It looks exactly the same as this no, one. No. How the hell am I supposed to tell the, the difference? The it looks exactly the same. No, the chili is is thinner, and it's actually spicier. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. Uh, all right. Put that cock down. When I think of spicy food, I think of Texas. I grow peppers at home every summer. It's something I truly love to do. So this is definitely something I'm familiar with today. I am making a spice-crusted hanger steak with a homemade habanero harissa. I have a lot of chili going on, so I'm using a charred eggplant and feta whip to help balance out all those spicy notes. Last week, I was almost sent home for taking a huge risk making dessert when it wasn't a dessert challenge. This time, I'm not gonna make that mistake. What happened last week is not gonna phase me. I'm coming back stronger than ever today. Looking good. Look at that. Whew. Hi, Bowen. How excited were you when you saw Jerome under that box? Exciting, and then to see Jerome's success, and then really happy because I'm trying to see my success next. Seeing Jerome be from same season, has his restaurant, has his own cookbook. I want to prove the judges, and especially Jerome, I have that skill. So I will bring all the spicy, all the smoke into my dish tonight. What are we making? I'm making a seafood stuffed pepper mofongo. Okay. What peppers are you using from the mystery box? Uh, Parvanello um, pepper and the um, Thai chili, some cayennes, and the, also the green chilies. So how do you plan to keep that heat at a great level, right, to where it's yes. not overly spicy? And then I have my sauce, too, and my sauce is sweet and make it balance out. What's in the seafood? Okay, uh, here? it's a long crab meat, crawfish tail, then um, pork, and then some caviar. Did we say caviar as well? Yes, black caviar. Black 
Caviar. And you plan to cook the caviar? Yes. Ready? Is that a dish? Yes. Right. Bo, you've got 23 minutes to go. Okay. Ready for frying? Perfect. We're gonna try a little hot pepper. Make sure you wash your hands, my G. Mm-hmm. Derek. What's up, chefs? How you doing, buddy? Uh -oh, I'm doing it's well. Dessert. I'm making a Szechuan peppercorn dusted churro with a spicy Thai chili chocolate sauce. Do you feel by going the route of the churro yep. that you're gonna separate yourself from the pack? Because it seems that no one else is going dessert, right, Joe? Right. No one. You're the only one. I'm trying to show that you can also put spicy in a dessert. The chocolate sauce isn't outside the box, but I'm gonna really make sure that the heat balances correctly. But then I'm gonna take the churro and I'm gonna dust it in Szechuan peppercorn. Get a little tingle in the, in the mouth feel. Excellent. Churro is something you have at street food, so you gotta figure out how to make this elevated. Yeah. So you're using the Thai chilies, right? Yeah. Cacao and chiles is something that's very Mesoamerican, very traditional. Okay. So what I would do, if I were you, is make your chocolate base, play with a couple of those different flavors. Sure. And you can always put another one in there if you feel like the chili's not there, okay? You got a lot of risk involved, young man. Yeah. Good, good luck, luck, Derek. Thank you, Chef. Looking good. Guys, 25 minutes gone, 20 minutes remaining. Great. Let's get these bad boys going. Right, Emily, so you know the heat is that Achilles heel, and she doesn't want to go anywhere near that tonight. She's forced to go there. But yep. she sounds good. Yeah, it's it does. a beautiful shrimp dish with a sort of tomato spiced infused sauce. I'm just excited to see how her dish is going to play out in the end. Oh, yeah, baby. Big Willie's going down to my uh, neck of the woods with a crawfish and shrimp etouffee. Wow, in 45 minutes, an etouffee? Ooh. Yes, an etouffee. Look, the wow. key to it is, is making sure that that roux is cooked out yeah. and really extracting the most amount of flavor that you can. I'm on a hot tamale train. Derek is going to give us our only dessert tonight. He's wow. making churros with a spicy chocolate sauce. Woo! It's there. That's a spicy chocolate. It's like very street food. It's very simple and sort of... How do you elevate it? Yeah, how do you elevate? So we're kind of a little bit puzzled by that. Derek is piping the churros very, very thin. If I was him, I would for sure go back and get a large piping tip to make sure that those churros were nicely sized. Because they have to be doughy inside, too. Yes. They can't be like cookies. Oh. And Bowen? I'm worried about how great his dish will turn out. Yeah. He's using multiple chili peppers. He's also using that poblano. Then with the seafood... I just hope it's not overdone on that spice. Yeah. He also said he's got caviar in that mixture. Yeah. So yeah. Bowen? <laughs> yeah. Bowen, don't use that caviar. Bowen is trying to add caviar in his dish, and I don't think that it's a good idea because caviar is like a topping, or something to enhance the flavors. So I'm a little bit nervous for him. I'm going to show some spiciness today. I'm using the caviar in the mixture because I just want to bring the flavors and give you the crunchiness when you're tasting the food. As long as you know what you're doing. You know me, Shanika. Never have a rule. Mix it up. I want to show the judges something creative on the plate, something you never tried before. So I don't feel nervous because I want to take chance. I have to show Jerome what I get. Let's hope it works out. Bowen, don't use that caviar. You know me, Shanika. Never have a rule. As long as you know what you're doing. I have to show Jerome what I got. But I got faith in him. He gonna pull through. He always does. You got this, V. You got it. Half an hour gone. 15 minutes remaining. Hey, Tara, how are you? What are we cooking up tonight? So today, um, I'm going Indian, and I'm Ooh. making a samosa oh, oh, with a man. tomato chili chutney. Oh, man, I love a good samosa. <laughs> Listen, you yes. are spicy right now. I mean, you have on these pepper earrings. It's the only way I know. <laughs> um, so you're making the dough for the samosas? I am, yep. Um, what's the chili you're putting in the samosa? Uh, so there is Fresno as well as Serrano and Kashmiri chili pepper in the filling. I'm also using Fresno and Serrano in the chutney. How do you plan to 
balance the spiciness well, in the dish. This chutney is made with brown sugar, so hope it will balance out the spice. The potato and the pea kind of helps balance that spice as well. The secret of samosa is making sure we pack the filling. Yes, yeah. And so it's sort of one third dough, two thirds filling. Make yes. sure there's no air in there. Yeah. Yes, chef. Give us that beautiful flavor. That's my biggest goal today. Right, young lady, they sound amazing. Good luck. Thank you so yeah, much, chef. Thank you. Oh, that's good. Oh. Amanda, you the calmest cook out here tonight, girl. Hi, hey, Amanda. What are we cooking up? So today I'm making lamb stuffed eggplant, and I'm making a shatta sauce with this chilies and vinegar, and it's a traditional condiment in Lebanese cuisine. And to balance out, I have some cooling yogurt sauce, just in case it is a little bit too spicy. One thing I like is that you have a cooling agent to counteract the, the spiciness yes. of the hot sauce if it gets too hot. Sounds delicious. You got used to eating, you know, hot food at a young age, right? Um, since I was a kid, it was like spicy food is a thing, and now even my daughter hands I love spicy foods. Yeah. Chilies, which ones are you using? Um, so I'm using the Hungarian, the Serranos, the Jalapenos. Um, we're using a variety. Sounds good. Thank good you, Chef. Luck. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Woo. It's spicy, guys. Get these in the fryers. Get these in the fryers. Flip over. Things are going to be heating up with all these damn chili peppers. Shanika. Yes, Chef. Man, the heat is on in this it kitchen tonight. Is, it is. Extraordinary dishes from up there. And who's looking good? Who's looking competent? I mean, right now, I'm not going to lie, Emily looks like she's competent in what she's doing. I just hope her spices are there. Yeah. And Amanda, I'm just, like, shocked at how calm she is when she cooks. As you know, it's in a wheelhouse, so right. this should be a home run for her, right? Right. Christian. Yes, sir. Who's looking vulnerable? I was looking at Derek's churros. His churros look kind of dark. So we'll just see how everything works out for him. Interesting indeed. Oh, no. Is that burnt? There's five minutes left on the clock, and my churros are overcooked. I'm realizing that I've used the wrong star tip, so they're not puffy enough. That's too small. 45 minutes is like the bane of my existence. I mean, at least 60 minutes. It gives you wiggle room. If you make a little error, you can fix it. With 45 minutes, it's like you make an error, and you're kind of stuck with it. Damn it. Churros are kind of dug, Derek. I do, what do I do? So there's not enough time for me to cook enough of them and plate them. I'm just left with really crunchy churros. I don't have time for that. 40 minutes gone. We're down to the last three and a half minutes remaining. Let's, Let's go. go. Come on, Emily. Oh. Shanika, do you know how good is this sauce? It looks good. It's spicy as hell. Let's go. 90 seconds to go. You're kidding me. Where did the last minute go? Where that cornbread going with it? It's gonna go right on top. Emily's just started to play. She's gotta go. She working like me. She working to the last minute. Quick, Emily. 20 seconds to go. This is more. Let's go. 10, 9, 9 8, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. Two, one, that's it. I feel amazing. Uh, everything that I wanted to come out came out. I can honestly cry right now because the flavors that I wanted, everything is there. You know, being in the bottom two weeks in a row, it lit something up under me because I know, uh, I know that I'm better than that. I took a big risk tonight but I'm worried because my churros are not puffy enough. This risk might not have been the one to take today. Tonight's challenge, you had to use some of those chili peppers inspired by a season nine master, Chef Jerome. Thank you so much for putting these cooks feet into the fire with their mystery box tonight. But because you've got a couple of season nine friends down here, it's only fair we have you watch from the comfort of the balcony. Good job, bud. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Excellent. Come on. It feels good to be up here on the balcony. <laughs> now, as you know, there's only seven you cooking this evening, so we're gonna be tasting all seven dishes to identify who's top and who is not. 
because one of you will be going home tonight. Remember, guys, there is no immunity, but the winner will get a huge advantage in the next challenge. First up, we'd like to taste Amanda's dish. Come on down. This dish pays homage to my Lebanese roots, and I hope the judges really get the heat, and I hope my eggplants are cooked perfectly. Okay, Amanda, tell us what dish you made and which of the chilies you integrated into your recipe. I made betanjin hara. It's a grilled eggplant dish that's filled with lamb, and it's spiced with Hungarian and habanero peppers. I have some fresh pomegranate and some crispy fried shallots for textural crunch. It just looks beautiful. Yay. I'm excited. Thank you. It looks amazing. You know, the dish is really good. And what I really like about it is the eggplant is so light, but it has this braised meat on it, and it's kind of like flavorful, intense, and the flavors all kind of work well. The heat level is perfect. Good job. Thank you. It's an exercise in texture from the crispy shallots on top, and each one of those chiles are speaking in a flavor point of view. They're not being muddled or kind of like all mixed together and jumbled. It's really smart. Amanda, it's delicious. A smart move with the pomegranates to sort of cool down. But when you've got that ground lamb like that, get those pans piping hot and caramelize it. Mm -hmm. So we've got texture on the individual ground lamb, but it's good. Thank you. Man, it's good. Beautiful. Yeah, come on. The next dish that we would like to taste, please come down, Senor Derek. I'm the only person that did dessert tonight. And when you're taking a risk, when there's only seven cooking, it's dangerous. Hopefully it pays off. Derek, what's your dish? I have a Szechuan peppercorn cinnamon sugar dusted churro with a Thai chili chocolate sauce. Uh, young man, I just want to say uh, kudos for having the to attempt the dessert tonight. I think you've tried to elevate this street food phenomenon into a, a fine dining plate. I just hope they're not too crispy. How do you get the Thai chili into the chocolate? I took about 12 Thai chilies and steeped them in the cream as I was heating it with vanilla and cinnamon. Oh. They're crispy, bro. They are crispy. Derek, you can hear that, right? Yes, sir. That's super crispy. OK, young man, let's deal with the elephant in the room. So, wrong nozzle. It's just way too thin. But I can just show you that there. I can see it. No, you I, can see. It's I know perfect. where I can do it better. So there's no cushion. Yeah. These things need to have that fluffy donut texture on the inside and the crispness on the outside, but actual chocolate's delicious. The heat is there. That's a nice thing. Is it infused enough? I don't know. I thought it was a crazy, bold move. If you pulled it off, delicious, but you missed the mark. There's tons of flavor in that sauce, and that really is a redeeming quality in this dish. And the cinnamon and the Szechuan peppercorn are an interesting pairing, by the way, and I like that. The tingle is nice. Yes, but the churros, you know what you did wrong. Yeah. Crunchy, greasy, cooked at too high temperature. This is disappointing. Thank you, Dirk. Thanks, Thank Chef. You. Stand tall, bro. Okay, next dish we'd like to try is Willie. Come on down. I'm feeling really good about my dish. I love the way it came out. I'm just hopeful that the judges see that I understood the task and I delivered. All right. Tell us what this dish is. I made a crawfish and shrimp etouffee with the jalapeno cornbread, and I used the jalapeno and the mazzano pepper inside my seafood stock as well. Visually, really, it looks plain, but I'm dying to see if you can get that roux cooked out in 45 minutes. A bold move by you tonight, and I hope it tastes good. Spice is delicious. And there's no sweetness in that cornbread, which mm -hmm. really does act as a great cooling agent across that etouffee. It's good. Thank you, chef. And the fact that you were able to capture the essence of an etouffee in this abbreviated time period was a stroke of genius. You've got a depth of flavor in there. And the heat, I was concerned that was going to be too abrasive, but it's not. I think the sweetness of the vegetables helped you in that regard. Willie, the dish is good. I like the flavor a lot. The spice is in moderation, and it's balanced. <laughs> this is great. More like this. Thank you. Good job, Willie. Good job, Thank Willie. Good job, Willie. All right, Willie. All right. He's arrived. Big Willie in the kitchen. Next up, 
Bowen, can you please bring down your dishes? Come on, Bowen. I put in a lot of effort, and also I think I showcase my creativity, and I'm really proud of my dish. Can you please describe your dish? I made a spicy seafood stuffed pepper served with mofongo mashed plantain cake. And then the, the chili I use is the banana pepper and then also the Thai chili and the jalapeno. That bone, unfortunately, just looks weird. Can you tell me what exactly is inside that chili? Ground pork, crab, crawfish tail, and then also a little bit of black caviar. Oh, oh, so you cooked oh. the caviar? Yes. And that's where the problems begin. Yeah. I told him not to do that. I told him not to do it. Bowen, you cooked the caviar. Yes. And that's where the problems begin. I told him not to do that. I told him not to do it. Let's taste it, shall we? What's the sauce around the outside? Because it is so hot. I put cayenne pepper and also ground chili peppers. It tastes very strange. There's still two or three things going on here. The actual chili that you grilled tastes quite nice. It's the filling inside that's a little bit bizarre. Damn, boy. So when you cook caviar like that, it goes hard. It's like little tiny ball bearings in your mouth. So I'm a bit confused here. This is way too much platano. This is green plantain that is thick and dense, and it's overshadowing any good elements that you have here. I mean, it's like hard and heavy, like a hockey puck. It's way too spicy. And cooking caviar is it's an amateur mistake. You don't cook caviar. You should know that. OK. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you, Chef. But it's way too hot. Yeah. It's like the sauce is raw, no? Yeah. Nothing's cooked out. Yeah. Next up, Michael, please step forward. I feel like I really use the peppers effectively today. I have both fresh and dried chilies in almost every element on this dish, but I hope it wasn't too much. So Michael, give us an insight to the chilies that you selected and describe the dish, please. The dish is a spice rubbed hanger steak with a spiced carrot salad, habanero harissa sauce, feta and charred eggplant puree. Uh, Michael, the dish looks beautiful. It's got that nice balance between the colors and I think the most important thing tonight alongside that heat is the cooling elements. So smart combination with that feta and eggplant. It's firing on all cylinders. It's crunchy, crispy, spicy, cool, creamy. It's got everything going on. Top notch dish, very good. Thank you so much, John. I think the brilliance lies in the fact that you use dry chilies and those three fresh chilies, because you have a beautiful contrast of something that's a little bit smokier and richer and deeper in flavor. And then also there's texture with that rub. It just sticks with you in a good way. Uh, yeah, Michael, it's uh, delicious. The protein's cooked beautifully. Tough on this one, hanger steak. Yeah. And beautiful combination of the spice, because it's not overheated, because of the coolness of that feta. But I think it needs more feta in there, because you've got a lot of spice going on. OK. But it's a really good dish. Wow. Good Thank job. Thank you, Chef. Boy, can cook. I yeah. Yeah, okay. Right, next up, Dara, please. Let's go. This dish is inspired by my dad's love for spice. I was cooking from my heart. I think it shows on the plate. Right, uh, young lady, describe the dish, please. The dish is a potato and pea samosa with a tomato chili chutney and a serrano mint chutney. Uh, visually, it looks beautiful. The sort of perfect appetizer. The pastry's blistering nicely. Uh, you made that dough, right? I did, Chef. Yeah. Well, how long did you let it rest for? For about 15, 20 minutes. It needed a little bit more time, but um, it's thin and crisped up. Great use of spice, great use of sauces, great flavor. Just the ratio of filling to dough is out of balance, but very good. This makes my palate dance. I love it. I think the idea of the potato being that perfect sponge for all those beautiful big bowl flavors was so smart. You stuck in that family of the jalapeno, fresno, and serranos, and I think that was smart because they have very similar flavors, but they don't supersede one another. Thank you. I think the nice thing for me is that you've got those chili, you know, influences across the condiments as well as nice, but that needs to rest longer, and it could be a touch thinner. Yeah. Doughy. Thank you.
Thank you, Doc. Yeah, mine's really thick here. Everything else is really good. It's just a little bit lighter. It's too thick. But look at the end. Too thick. Yeah. Mm. Right, finally. Um, Emmy, please um, make your way forward. Thank you. You know, the thing I'm most nervous about is just the judges tasting the spice because of my lack of experience cooking with chilies and spice, that it's gonna be a little lackluster on the palate. Emily, um, give us an insight to the chili you used and describe the dish, please. This is a chili-dusted shrimp fra diavolo with handmade pasta that incorporates that espalette chili pepper and a spicy tomato sauce, pancetta, and then some Calabrian chili oil to finish it off. Um, Emily, it's Russian quality, but I think tonight we were concerned about your attitude to spice because you don't like it. Let's hope it tastes as good as it looks. This dish is... Uh... This dish is uh, top, top notch. It's textbook. I mean, the pasta is perfectly made. It's fresh pasta, yeah. but it still has a nice toothsome feel to it. Tomato sauce is bright, acidic. Chili integration is perfect. Great dish. Thank you. Yeah, for me, the shrimp's not greasy. It is crunchy. It's well seasoned. You use the right peppers in this. Yeah, just really smart choices. Thank you. I think what you've got to understand is that you should be using more of these ingredients more often. But the dish has got finesse. Even the chili all around the outside is a bright lift to that pasta. So, uh, well done. Very good job. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. That's pretty good. Wow. <laughs> okay, all of you. Joe, Ron and myself have some very, very important decisions to make. Excuse us, please. Thank you. So, top dishes. Um, yeah. I, I have to say, Amanda's was beautiful. Think about the, how many chilies she used. She used mm -hmm. five different five. peppers. I hate this part. Uh, uh, Emily's, on the other hand, was like on another level, I think. Yes, that was restaurant quality. Yeah. Michael was good. Yeah, Michael was really good. The hangar steak? Maybe not on the level of the other two. So, on the negative side, the churros were Overcooked. a problem. Overcooked. Overcooked. Yeah. And, and, and Bowen was literally grabbing everything in that pantry. But you don't put pork with caviar, let alone cooked caviar. No. So, we all agree on who's going home? Yes. Sweetie. Shall we? It's a shock. Whew. These debates are never easy, let me tell you. But there were two dishes tonight that really stood out for all the right reasons. Please come forward. Amanda. And Emily. Right, Amanda and Emily, uh, tonight you cooked the best dishes by far. Amanda, yours showed a level of confidence. The lamb was absolutely spot on. Emily, you should cook with more spice if you can deliver a dish that showed restaurant quality beyond belief. But there was one dish that we felt had that slight edge. This individual will gain a huge advantage across the next challenge. Congratulations goes to... Emily. I'll cook with more spice. I mean, I can, I can do it, clearly, so. Please, both of you, head upstairs. Well done. Hey. Shock of all shocks. I think every single person in this room tonight was counting on me to be at the bottom, if not going home. Now for the not-so-good news. There were two dishes that we felt completely missed the mark. I think both you know who you are. Why don't you both make your way down here? Thank you. Oh my God, no. This is my first time being in the bottom. I didn't do my best. This risk could send me home. Bowen, tonight's dish completely missed the mark. Overcomplicated, badly executed, and not the right balance of heat. Derek, we love the tenacity, but your technique tonight was off. The churros weren't made properly, and they were the star of your dish. But Joe, Aron, and myself felt there was one dish that did miss the mark more than the other. The person leaving Master back to win is... Bowen.
Derek, say goodbye to Bo and head back to your bench, please. Bone, I wanted this dish to work so badly. It just was the wrong choices you made with those ingredients. Bowen, I have to say, you're a much better cook than that dish was. Young man, you know, top nine, um, you've been an absolute pleasure uh, to mentor for the second time in this competition. Um, I think you've got a, a very bright, exciting future in front of you. And I can't wait to get to that bistro, to sit down at that table and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart, we are going to miss you, young man. Come and say goodbye. Come on. Oh. You were great, Bowen. I'm very proud of you, OK? Thank okay, you. OK, we're coming for dinner, remember? <laughs> Please place your apron on your bench and say goodbye. Thank you, Bowen. Bye, Bowen. I proud of myself because I'm taking risk in the competition. I've been up, I've been down. It's just like a roller coaster. Oh, Bowen. Bye, Bowen. Miss you. I think Master Chef gave me the explosion to set me up for success. I'm going back home to earn money, okay? Yes. So I will go back to home, <laughs> be humble, be loved. Bowen, we'll see you on the 29th. Joe, Aron, and myself. Three top, 7.30 for three. You better come. <laughs> Next time, no. the top eight face their biggest challenge yet, the wall. You and a partner must create dishes that look and taste identical, but you won't be able to see each other. <sighs> this is going to be a mess. Salmon is in. Bird, let's go. And with double elimination on the line. Oh, that sauce looking, Willie. Is that Christian? Shannon, are you there? It's time to get in sync. Got it. Ducks at 1.30, I'm pulling it. What are they doing? Do I already strained it. No. Look at me. Uh, you need to get on the same page yes, now. Yes. Or they'll be out of the kitchen for good. It just looks bland. It tastes like cough syrup. It's that disappointing. Oof. One potato, two potato.